Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Physiology Made Easy with me, Dr. Amir Sandhu. Now in the upcoming episodes we're going to talk about the biological mechanisms of obesity and we'll talk about how we actually store fat from the diet that we consume uh, in specialized cells within the body and we'll look at some lifestyle factors uh, which are the most effective to reduce uh, uh, obesity and uh, body fat as well. So we'll look at that with the uh, underpinning science uh, and hopefully the videos will enable you to have more appreciation about some of the, um, the key theories and the key knowledge that we have available about how we gain fat. So in terms of the um, learning outcomes, what I want you to get out of uh, these episodes is to try and understand the importance of adipose tissue. So uh, adipose tissue is the primary uh, site uh, where fat is actually stored in the body. So it's very important before we think about you know, weight loss strategies, we can understand where the fat is actually stored and how it's regulated uh, from a physiological perspective. Uh, we'll look at the changes that the adipose tissue undergoes uh, in people who are obese as you start to uh, increase uh, your weight. Uh, and as I said before, we'll look at the lifestyle factors, especially focus on, on exercise because there's some interesting stuff about um, whether exercise is beneficial for weight loss or not. So we'll have a look at that as well. Um, um, and all of the things that we'll talk about in the, the videos, uh, in this video and the future upcoming videos, uh, will be underpinned by scientific research. So there'll be hopefully uh, not any misconception, it will just be a summary of the uh, available uh, scientific uh, research. So. Before we go forward in terms of understanding uh, what adiposity is, it's very important for us to, to know what body composition is. Okay, Now, the simple definition of body composition, which I've stated down here, is the relative amounts of fat mass that we have in our body and the fat-free mass. Okay, Now, fat mass can consist of a number of different types. Okay, Now, you, you may have heard of these terms before, and uh, some of them might be new terms, or some of them you may have heard the terms, but the definition has, is incorrect. So it's very important that we're able to define what these terms are. Now, visceral fat, is commonly found around the organs. So this is fat uh, that's stored around our abdominal organs. It's the worst type of fat to actually have because as we shall see in the, rem the rest of the, uh, the presentation, fat can release harmful chemicals into the circulation which can attack the blood vessels. And this is why obesity is a major risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So visceral fat deposited around the organs. We also have fat which is known as ectopic fat. Now this is fat that's contained within an organ okay so it's not around an organ it might be uh, you might visceral fat would be fat that's deposited around the outside structure of the organ ectopic fat actually resides within the organ itself and can manifest in various pathological uh, disorders then we have the subcutaneous fat. This is the fat that's stored underneath our skin, hence why it's called subcutaneous. Um, and this is the fat that helps to keep us warm. You know, it provides an insulating uh, layer in, uh, throughout our whole body and helps to keep us warm. And we also have intramuscular fat. This is fat which is interspersed between the muscles. Uh, it can be used to provide uh, energy, particularly when you're doing low intensity, long duration exercise. So this is an example of the various types of fat, uh, fat mass that make up our body. Now fat-free mass, um, it's quite easy to understand that anything that isn't fat in the body is going to be fat-free mass. So it's all non-fatty tissue. So we're looking, we're looking at our muscles, which make up you know, a large majority of our fat-free mass. But you've also got to consider things like bones, teeth, nails, hair, uh, the weight of our internal organs, uh, all of the, the connective tissues, so your tendons, your ligaments, your cartilage, uh, blood and other uh, fluids uh, within and around uh, the cells of uh, uh, the organs. Uh, so all of those things constitute the fat-free mass. And quite often when you go to um, a sports facility or a, a, a health clinic, you'll see uh, those scales which give you an indication of your fat mass and fat free mass they're relatively accurate so they're a good way to to kind of understand whether you you have a, a greater amount of fat or, uh, or or fat free mass relative to each other now the key part in uh, so basically where fat is stored in our body is the adipose tissue okay so this is basically an energy storage organ everything that we eat 
that doesn't get used up in terms of uh, energy uh, expenditure. So you know, if we eat something and go out and do um, you know a long bout of exercise, go for a cycle ride or for a walk, we're likely to use up some of those calories. But any excess calories, they're going to get stored uh, in the adipose tissue, and it's actually 65%, approximately 65% of our excess calories, uh, which are consumed, uh, that we consume, sorry, that basically get stored in adipocytes. So anything that doesn't is not needed for your normal metabolic processes. So your resting metabolic rate, you have energy actually needed to digest food as well, uh, and, and physical activity. Once that's all done, then the remaining energy that's in your body gets stored in the adipose tissue. And what we can see here is that the adipose tissue is deposited in different sites of, of the body. Okay, now if I, um, uh, I'll bring up this last point here and I'll explain to it in just a, I'll, I'll explain it in just a moment. But before we actually try and think about uh, adipose tissue, we've got to think about these as individual cells which hold the fat that we consume in our diet. Okay, and that fat can have protective function as well. So if we look at the heart here, we see that there's um, uh, epicardial adipose tissue around the surface of the heart. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing because when you think about the heart, as it's contracting, as the ventricles are contracting, it's exerting torsional twisting forces on the very delicate coronary vessels which are on the surface of the vessel. We can't see them in this diagram, but our heart has these very delicate coronary vessels. Now, some of that fat actually acts as uh, a padding and protection from those uh, twisting forces, okay? So uh, some of the fat actually has a beneficial effect of being around the organ. Equally, if the heart has to work very hard, then it's able to actually get, uh, extract energy from uh, the, the adipose tissue from the fat to, to, to supply the, the uh, uh, mitochondria, which are in the ventricles contracting. So as the heart works harder, the, the fat around the heart can actually be used for uh, energy um, uh, consumption, okay? Now, the reason why, and this actually links to this point here. Now, the reason why lipids are more readily stored um, as fat, as compared to say, for example, carbohydrates, is because they actually have a much greater energy yield than other nutrients. Now, what do we mean by greater energy yield? It means that when you break down fat to produce energy, you get much more ATP, adenosine triphosphate. This is like the usable form of energy. Okay, that our cells use to, to carry out a particular function. If I was to contract my arm, the reason I'm able to do that is because I'm using energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate, ATP, uh, and that is more readily available when you have fat being broken down as compared to some of the other uh, substrates that are available. Now this figure here has actually been taken from an excellent uh, review article which I'm going to put a link at to the bottom of this video. I would suggest that you go and have a read through that review article. It's very well written uh, and it summarizes this whole concept really, really well and it's got some excellent uh, figures there. So I, I don't take credit for making this figure myself. It's adapted from uh, a very fantastic review referenced uh, in the in the uh, section below the video. So now we need to think about what makes a, the uh, what what makes up the components of the adipose tissue. Okay, so we've got to think about uh, what adipose tissue actually is when we break it down. Essentially, adipose tissue is basically a cluster of cells which are housed together in different parts of the body, and it's within here within each of these cells that the fat actually gets stored, okay? It's in, within, in each of these cells where the fat actually gets stored, and we'll talk about that pro process of storage uh, a little bit later. But first of all, we've got to think, of, we've got to treat adipose tissue, tissue as a, a re reservoir for storing energy. So energy that we consume in our, in our diet, fat that we consume in our diet being stored to be ready to use later on. And this is why, you know, you can, you can actually fast for quite a number of days and you wouldn't actually, you know, you wouldn't die from not eating food for five days, for example, because we've got plenty of reserve in these reservoirs here, okay? Plenty of reserve energy in the form of the um, 
uh, fat containing the adipose cells. Now when we look at this diagram here we can actually see that the adipose tissue is very well nourished with blood vessels. Okay, Now those blood vessels are obviously taking, um, uh, they're transporting those lipid particles, uh, the fat that we consume in our diet, uh, from areas of the body where the digestion has occurred to be stored in the adipose site and likewise the circulation is obviously uh, as a loop so if we need to um, use the energy that's stored in here, then a process called lipolysis, which we'll talk about uh, later on, takes place and that energy can be broken down, transported to the blood vessels, to the target organ to be used as energy. Uh, we've also got these supporting structures here. We've got fibroblasts, um, uh, which help to kind of support and provide structure to the adipose tissue clumping together. Uh, we've got a pre-adipocyte, which is basically a baby adipocyte, which is uh, going to mature into one of these uh, uh, bigger adipocytes with time. Um, now what's extremely important that we can see here is these cells called macrophages. Now these are immune cells, okay, they're involved in inflammatory response within the body and they can be activated in adipose tissue and this is why uh, obesity, when you have too much adipose tissue, is said to be a low-grade inflammatory condition because the adipose tissue, the adipose cells are constantly signaling uh, with each other, there's crosstalk going on between macrophages, T cells as well, which we can see embedded within the adipose uh, tissue. There's a crosstalk going on between uh, the, the cells and they can actually activate, become activated and start causing an inflammatory response within the body. Okay, now some of that inflammatory response can cause you know, direct injury to that particular organ or tissue. So if this adipose tissue was around the liver, for example, uh, it could cause direct damage to the liver or it can, some of those inflammatory cells can get into the circulation of, let's say for example, the liver, and then be transported elsewhere to the rest of the body and cause injury, injury there. So the fact that the blood vessels and the capillaries uh, and adipose tissues are highly vascularized suggests that if we gain weight, then any harmful effects that we have from a gain in adipose tissue will quite quickly start affecting the rest of our uh, organs and tissues elsewhere in the body as well. Um, so that's the most important thing to think about in terms of the structure of the adipose tissue. These are some of the um, uh, key uh, this is kind of like a key schematic in terms of how to visualize how a clump of fat actually looks like. So you grab a little bit of fat from, from your belly and you can imagine that that fat that you're holding is consisting of uh, you know, these cells clustered together with inflammatory cells embedded in between and it's highly vascularized as well. And so this is the introductory part to this topic. Stay tuned for the next video where we'll talk a little bit more in detail about what happens to adipose tissue uh, during obesity.